Hello everyone, my name's Andy. I'm the skipper on Sea Urchin 3, which is a charter fishing boat, which runs out of Whitby in North Yorkshire. I thought I would take the opportunity to put a few things together to... A picture paints a thousand words, so they say. So what I wanted to do was put a few things together to try and show the common mistakes that people make. I've, this winter in particular, we've experienced lots of anglers who've never uptided before or downtided. So I thought what I'll do is we'll put some bits and pieces together just really to try and give you a head start. I've got no customers booked on tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is in the morning, I'm gonna, I, I need to fill up with fuel. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go out not too far, two or three miles away from Whitby. Um, I'm going to drop the anchor and basically I will talk you through and show you how I approach uptide fishing. There are lots and lots of little elements to uptiding, downtiding that if you get all of them wrong, it can make a big difference to the outcome of your trip. If you get them all right, then if there's fish there and the feeding, you'll get bites. Good morning, welcome aboard Sea Urchin. As I said last night, I'm just going to head out this morning and do a few little bits and pieces on uptiding. So before I cast off, I just thought I would go through a few bits and pieces to do with the terminal tackle that we use. So uptiding is different to the gear that we use for, for wrecking. Generally, shorter, stronger rods for wrecking, uptiding, a little bit longer, so it enables you to cast. What do I use? Um, my own personal preference is for uh, this kind of a setup. This is a, a Daiwa Tournament Club Tide Rod. It's rated 5 to 10 ounces casting weight, which is perfect. We've also got, we've got it coupled with um, a Tournament QDA reel. I like this reel simply because it has a quick drag. So I'll demonstrate the, the reason why I like the quick drag when the boat starts to drift and how we fish. So that, that's the main reason for using the gear that I use. The reel's loaded with 60 pound braid. Now, everybody has their own little preference. This is just something that all my higher reels have got on. It's 60 pound braid, I use strong gear. The bottom that we fish isn't sandy and smooth, it's really rocky, kel, all kinds of nasty, so need a fairly stout tackle. So I choose 60 pound braid. So next, we talk about the the terminal tackle, the leads. When you are uptiding, the leads that you want to be using are things such as these. These are breakaway leads. This is 170 grams, or I think six ounces in old money. Six ounces is really for the tidal flow that you get at Whitby. Six ounces is around about the correct weight. It's not very often that it'll break out. I'm a big advocate in keeping things as simple as possible. For uptiding, we use a, we have the lead sliding on a boom. So we just have, you can see that there. We have a size four snap swivel with a bead which slides up and down this two foot length of 60 pound on it. Again, 60 pound max people but strong stout gear if you hook a real big fish the last thing you want to do is be coming home and telling the story of the big one that got away all the gear that I use will enable me to land pretty much anything that I hook so 60 pound mono for my trace with my leg to slide on and then we follow that up with the bait trays Everybody has their own personal preference. This isn't me telling you that the only way to fish is this, but if you're coming on board sea urchin and you want to use my higher tackle, basically this is what you'll be getting. Attached to the snap swivel on the lead section, we then put a three foot length of 50 pound mono. Again, a little bit weaker than the boom length, so if the, if the hook bait does snag, which quite often it will, if you're going to lose anything, normally you'll just lose two hooks and that's it, you don't lose a full set of gear. We choose to set them up in the Pennell style, which is like so. So the bottom hook on this arrangement, the bottom hook is a size 6 or O'Shaughnessy type hook. 
the panel hook, the one on the top, you'll see is a completely different shape. That is a size 5 circle hook. All the rigs that I use on sea urchin that I provide for people, including my own rigs, I always use a circle hook. The amount of times that we've landed fish and when you get them in, the bottom hook might have dropped out, but that circle hook, once it's in, really does bang the fish. At Whitby, there's three main baits really that people will use. We use uh, squid, black lugworm and crab cart or crab wings. If I'm fishing with one rod, I will bring at least two packs of unwashed squid and two wraps of worm. A wrap of worm gives you 10 large black lugs, so 20 worms in total. The one thing you've got to be doing all the time when you're up tidying is you've got to have in the back of your mind that fish can't see. They are going entirely on scent. So the last thing that you want to do, which again is something that I see regular, so a mistake not to make, is people get the bait that morning so it'll be frozen. The first thing they do is get on the boat, chuck the bucket over the side, bring up some water from the harbour and throw the bait in it. Uh, the water in the harbour isn't the cleanest in the world. You know, there's all sorts, you can see the, the slick of oil and diesel on the top and would you really want to put your fresh bait in that? No, I certainly never would. What I recommend you do is, I'll show you because I've got some here. What I recommend you do is when you get your frozen squid, bring some freezer bags with you. Just tip it in, the squid into the freezer bag and then put it into a bucket of water. By the time we've steamed out for half an hour, you'll get there, it'll be defrosted. So that's definitely what you need to do with the squid. Don't put it in water and wash away all the scent. So literally you're gonna throw something that's lost the best bit of it. So that's with the squid. The black lug, the black lug comes on cellophane sheets and it's rolled up and you literally, all you need to do when you get on board again, unroll it, just lay it out and it will defrost before you get there. So that when you get when we get down to the uptiding grounds, drop the anchor, all you've got to do then is wrap on your um, squid and black lug and start fishing. That's pretty much it on the tackle front. You don't need a huge amount more. The one thing that I would recommend that you do, if you can find them, I don't know what they're called. Um, they are these. They're a wire, a wire bungee. Basically, it's got foam around wire. Um, what we use these for is we wrap them around the rails so that you can put your rod in. You don't want to really, there's only certain times of the day where you need to hold your rod when you're up tidying. The majority of the time it can be stood up against the rail and you just visually watch for bites. You'll see the tip bouncing around. So what we do with these is we wrap them around the rails and then you can put the rod in and fasten it in. So if the boat does swing, you're not, your rod's not going to disappear over the time, uh, over the side. These are a great bit of kit to have. Somebody came on board the other day and he said, if, I think he got three for a, in the pound shop for a couple of quid. So they're not expensive, but they're a great piece of kit to bring. So that's pretty much it for the tackle basics. If there's anything else that I think of that I've forgotten on the way out, we'll discuss it while we're at sea. So I'm going to cast off now. We'll run out. I'm only going to go a couple of miles out. It's not a, a serious fishing session. It's more than anything just to go through how we do things, just to give you an idea for when you come on board, if you've not done it before, you'll be able to hit the ground running. So I'll see you out there shortly. Off we go. So we're not going to go too far, a couple of miles that's all, just so that we can go through some of the things that will help you land more fish. Instead of spending half the day getting to grips with learning to uptime, you know, you can have a look at this and you've got a real good idea and then the first few times that you're there, within the hour you'll be fishing just like everybody else and hopefully putting plenty of fish on board. That's what it's all about. 
beautiful day today. The wind's just starting to lift a little bit. But we're only going to be out for an hour or so. The chances are we may not even catch a fish. But I just think it's important to get everybody see. <coughs> just to let everybody see. Um, how we go about it. And yeah, please don't for one minute think that I am the uptidy expert, I'm not by any stretch. What I am though is observant. I watch lots of people who come and fish on board sea urchin and I see lots of common mistakes, even with most people who've been fishing for many years. So if I can help people not make those mistakes just by putting a few little video clips together, then that's what I'd like to do. One of the problems that we do get at Whitby is seals. There are lots of seals and some days they can be a menace and then other days they just leave you alone. The one thing that you can't do, and I'll, I'll, I'll dispel a commonly held myth that as soon as you see a seal the fishing's going to be rubbish. That just isn't the case. Sometimes the seal, if they are on hunt mode, they will literally take off every fish you hook. But then some days they'll just sit, you'll see them hanging around the boat, the heads up, and they're just not feeding. So don't automatically think that just because you've seen a seal, you're not going to catch any fish. That is not the case. Let's hope Sammy's already had his breakfast this morning and he's no longer hungry. Hello everyone. Excuse the shadows casting across my face. The uh... The aerial masts are swinging in the swell with the nice sunshine that we've got today in Whitby. So I'm a couple of miles outside of the pier ends now and I've dropped the anchor. So next thing to do, all the gear's already set up. I'm using exactly the same things that we spoke about earlier and we're going to bait up some traces and see if we can get a couple of bites for you. So first things first, the hooks, as discussed, the panel arrangement, and we're going to bait them today with squid and black lug. So I'll show you how we do it, and then I will do a close up so it makes it a little bit easier. Bit of a messy affair, definitely need a cloth for cleaning your hands. Yeah, bit messy. And don't forget, you will need bait elastic to make the baits look presentable. What will happen is, I see it quite regularly, I'll, I'll give you an example of what I've seen which is bad um, and then I'll show you how we do them and I'm, you know, even to the uneducated you will be able to see one hook bait looks far better than another. In order to get a well presented hook bait you will need to use bait elastic. The reason that we use bait elastic is primarily to keep the hook bait on for a, a longer period of time. If there are, what well, I class as nuisance species, you know, pouting, waiting, things like that. If they are in the swim, then what's going to happen is if your bait is unelasticated, it's not being held on with elastic, they will clean your hooks off in a couple of minutes and you'll be fishing with no bait. So we put bait elastic on and that'll keep the bait on long enough for hopefully Mr. Cod to come and find it. So without further ado, we'll get on and make up a couple of bait traces. Last point worth mentioning. I've heard on countless occasions people saying, oh, I don't like uptiding, it's really boring. I think uptiding can be really boring if you don't work at it. So it's all about being organized. I use, always have, so when I'm fishing with one rod, I always have at least two bait traces on the go. That enables me to fish for longer. If you, it'll take you approximately five minutes to put on you know, sort of three to five minutes to put on a hook bait uh, by the time you've whipped it on with the elastic. Now, if you're going to do three to five minutes and you're going to do 20 casts in a day, for example, you add up all those minutes, you're going to lose an hour's fishing. So what I do is I have two traces. One trace, I will, so I will cast in, let it go down to the bottom. Once everything's settled, that's the, the beauty of the, um, the, the foam 
wire straps that I've said about. You can fasten the rod in knowing, safe in your own mind, your rod's not going to disappear over the side. And then while it's just settling down, you can quickly get your next hook bait already whipped on. So you just clip on, clip off. So you get a bite. Quite often when you're upside in, the bites will come in, you know, with eight people on the boat, quite often, two or three people will get bites within a minute. A pack of fish have turned up. So what you want to do, instead of just getting the one fish, is if you've got at least one, if not two extra bait traces made up, you literally get a bite, wind the fish up, unclip it, leave the fish on the deck, you can sort that out afterwards, put on your fresh hook bait and cast in again. And all of a sudden you can maybe turn, instead of one pack of fish taking one fish from it, maybe you can take two or even three fish sometimes before they drift away. So it's all about being organised. And believe me, when you work at it, the harder you work at it, the greater the rewards will be. And yeah, the days fly by quickly when you're working at it, they really do. You're either baiting, you're casting, there's always something to do. So these shadows, I apologise, are so annoying, uh, but there's nothing I can do, it's the sun. I'm glad to see it. So we'll get some bait traces tied up. Okay, so my squid, nicely defrosted in my bag. And my two wraps of black lugworm. And this is bait elastic. It comes in, uh, the bait elastic comes in three different thicknesses. Uh, this is not the really, really thick one because that can be a bit of a pain to break and cut off. This is the not the extra fine, this is just fine bait elastic. I find it to be, it doesn't break too often when you're wrapping the baits on. Um, so that's the one that I use. It only costs about just over a quid, between a pound and two pounds for a spool of elastic and you will literally tie on hundreds of baits. Um, I've, I've used this one spool, uh, I used it for a whole day tying on four anglers who were on higher tackle, helping them uh, tying their baits on. So it goes a long way for next to nothing, but it is essential, honestly. The amount of people that don't bring it, um, yeah, bait elastic. So I will go back down now and show you where we're at. Let's see if we can, uh, so excuse not being able to see me, that's probably a bit of a blessing, you don't, can't see my ugly mud. So we open the bag of squid and there are, th these are, just some that I've taken out of the freezer. Now, there's, I don't know whether there's going to be anything in here that's my perfect size for untidying. And if there isn't, that's actually quite a good. Yeah, they, these are all ordered, these are bigger than I would ordinarily use. So what I will do is I'll show you what to do when you've got squid. So my ideal hook bait size would be something. You know, we're talking probably two thirds of that. Instead of cutting it into, what we'll do is we'll just trim it, make it small. Do that in a second. Put that out of the way. Just open the black worm. So inside the black worm, there's two rounds. Well, there's two sticks. I think there's five worms in each. Like I said, it is a bit of a messy affair. But don't worry about that. So we open up. And I was saying before that when you first get on board, I mean, you can see these are obviously defrosted. But what you do when you first get them from the shop is you just literally unroll them. These will, these would be frozen, obviously, when you get them from the shop. Just literally unroll the sleeve, and lay them out like that. And then as we steam down to the upside in ground, or up to the, depending on where we're going, these will defrost when you get there. You don't want to be trying to put these on frozen. Um, they're a bit of a nightmare. So I use one worm per cast. So these are, you know, they, I, I do like the ones in cellophane. There are other options. Some people just use ones that come in paper, which I think dries the worms out. So without further ado, I'm going to make up a hook bait. So I have my, I have a bait trace here, ready to go. So first things first, is the squid. So we're going to cut this fella up a little bit, take some off him so he's not quite so big. 
Okay, so that's the sort of size that I would be looking for. And then we take the hooks. I don't know which is the best way with the light. I will do another close up. So essentially, you turn your hook upside down into the squid. Don't put it all the way through. Leave it inside and then just turn and push it so the hook comes out of the inside of the squid. I'm sure you can see that. And then we hook the head of the squid onto the big hook. So this is the big hook at the bottom that we're using. So you can see now that's the start of the hook bait. So the squid's head and this is one of the things that normally gets eaten first is the head so that's why you want a hook in it. Then what we do is we slide down the trace, the panel hook, and then we tip the bait up straight, making sure the hook point is standing proud. Okay? If it's not standing proud, if it's matched by the bait, then the chances are you won't hook the fish properly. And then what we do is we, we measure off the top hook here against the top of the bait, and then we wrap around twice. That will hold the hook in place and stop it from sliding. Then we just simply hook it in the top of the squid. So that's what you've got now. So that is the start. So your, your squid is now mounted and it's hanging vertically, not all scrunched up in a ball. Already it's looking half decent. We'll now take it to the next level. We'll put Mr. Black Lug on and there are I'll take that out, we don't need that. So there are various ways of doing it, everybody has their own, but I'll show you a really easy and simple way that I always use. So I'm going to get my full worm, I literally hang it over the top hook and hang it back up again. So it's now just literally hanging down the side of the squid. I then hold him, find my bait elastic, and then I just pinch the elastic between my finger and I start to wrap. I start at the top near the, the panel hook and we just start to whip. Just go around a few times until you get it in place. Once it's in place, you can then kind of go to town and work your way all the way from the top down to the head of the squid. Okay. So as you can see, we're not shy, we put plenty on. At all times you can see the hook point is clear and not being hindered by the, the hook bait. So we keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. You can see the worm already, the black lug is already starting to ooze and you know release its liquids. It is full of attraction. And then I finish it off by making a little loop come round, pass the elastic through, and it, it just finishes it off. And that's it. Pull for a break. Just to show you the hook bait now, you can see there's the circle hook at the top and at the bottom, both hooks standing proud, which is really, really important. It looks the business. It looks like a bite. I'll now quickly show you, um, I have another trace somewhere it's uh, ready to be tied up. I'll just grab it and I will show you. I will show you an example of what I've seen people do and the difference between the hook bait that I've just tied up and what they were doing. I will show you. I've seen some bad examples um, on trips when I've been out. This is through no fault of their own. This is through you know people just simply not knowing, and and that's. As a charter skipper, I, I view that as my job to do is to to put people right and help them catch more fish. So we've got the bait trace, and this is I am not lying, this is exactly what I've seen happen. Okay, somebody gets on board the boat, and the first thing they do is they get the squid and they cut it into bits like this. And then they take the, the panel hooks and they'll just get a bit and hook one on there. I 
and one on there. And that's what I've seen cast in. That is absolutely pants. It just flies around and it literally, what are you going to use? That or that? Mm, I'll take this one. Okay, now we've got a bait trace tied up. We'll get it cast out and I'll show you how to feel it to the bottom and set everything up, ready to get your first bite. Okay, let's get this one flicked out. These shadows are absolutely doing my nothing, but I will do the best I can. Steven Spielberg, I definitely ain't. Right, we'll get baited up and cast out. Okay, before I do that, something that's just entered my mind, it's definitely worth me pointing something out to you. So, this was the lead sliding on the trace, and then we're going to put the hook link into the snap swivel on the bottom, which completes the rig essentially. But the one thing you've got to consider is, you, if, so if you're coming on sea urchin, the chances are you'll be fishing with six, seven, maybe eight other people up tied in, a maximum of eight. And you are casting away from the boat. That's You don't need to cast miles away because we're normally fishing in anything from sort of 15 to 20 meters of water on average. So you don't need to be a million miles away, but ideally you want to be flicking it away from the boat. So the last thing that you want is leads with spikes on and big hooks flying around inside the deck. So what we do to combat that or to help reduce the chances of somebody getting caught, right, I'll put that behind there. So with the lead, you then take your tied off bait trace and so it's now upside down. So the bottom hook where the squid's head is, is at the top. And all you do is you see the, the, the arms on the lead is you just take it and hang it on. Just hang it on like that. Really is that simple. And yes, it looks like it might tangle. It doesn't tangle. If you do it properly, it won't tangle. All that's going to happen is it'll either pop off the arm when you cast or it'll come off when it hits the water. But it's easier to cast that one little tiny bit like that instead of trying to fling something with a three foot uplink on. So, right. I'll bop this out now. You can see just behind me now, we've got Shy Talk. He's uh, Mr. Ward's just popped up this area. He's got some lads on fishing today. We must be in a good area. If Rich Ward's here, there must be a few fish about here. Right, let's get this out. So we're now feeling it down. We're feeling it down. We're in 16 and a half metres of water here. I'm just going to keep feeling it down. When the lead stops, obviously it's down the bottom. Right, okay. So the lead's now touched down. And what I'm going to do, if you see, is pay off about a rod length's worth of line. So we've peeled that off. And now put the bail arm over. And put the rod down. Fasten it in the bungee, and that's it, it's fishing. We just wait for the bite, but we don't wait. That's what I was saying. You now, you get stuck in and you fasten up your bait, you know, your next bait trace, and get yourself ready. Let's see if we can catch one for the camera. I might not bother fishing with two rods. I think. Yeah, just saying there, I might not bother fishing with two rods, even though I've got two, two set there. I find, and it's, I think this is a sound bit of advice, to be honest, I would rather fish well with one rod than fish average with two. It can be, especially if you get a pack of fish move in, if you get two bites at once, all of a sudden you can fall behind and it just gets a bit messy. So, yeah, I would say fish one well. Um, if it goes a little bit quiet then put a second one out but when the fish turn up one rod is definitely you know it really is it certainly is for me anyway okay i'll come real close again worm wrapping so holding the elastic we go around 
and round. And work your way down. So make sure your hook point's standing proud. Okay. Make that little loop and then pass your elastic through. Snap it on. All done. So that's another trace ready to go. And just like I said, just to reiterate, okay, so you get your lead and you're tied on with elastic there and hang it on the prongs like so. Then you're ready to go. Get this one out. So now I've got two rods fishing. He's bleeding shadows. Yeah, so we keep it. So we keep it going. I'm just putting on a fresh bait now. I've already. squid on wipe my hand I want to get my rod on okay right so we'll cast this out
might still be on. I'll just have a quick look. Here we go. <laughs> Doesn't feel like a really small fish either, to be fair. I'll just see if I can... Uh, that's it. Thank <laughs> you. 